Leicester, 33 minutes played, it's a chance for Crystal Palace, it's Ricardo Orsolini to Tomas Barty, passing it to Williams, threading it back to Tomas Barty, who's going to take the shot, and thanks to Kasper Butterfinger Schmeichel, it's 1-0. 50 minutes played, Milivojevic on the ball, he passes it to Dembele, to Nyaki Williams, and Nyaki Williams gets pulled down by none other than Soyon Chu, and, well... It's a penalty for us. Milivojevic to bury this one. He's been consistent lately and he's done it again. 2-0. West Ham. Early into the match, it's a chance off an indirect free kick. It's a Thal on the ball. He passes it to Inyaki Williams. Inyaki decides to run into the edge of the box. He cuts inside, sees that Thal who's going to take the shot. And what's this? Yeah, another penalty. Milivojevic to completely create deja vu and he's done it again. He scored at London Stadium for I think probably the third time. 17 minutes played. Once again, it's Crystal Palace on the attack. It's Orsolini to Brahim. Brahim with the beautiful threaded ball to you. Yusef Atal, and Yusef Atal is just gonna put it into the corner, and it's his first goal of his Crystal Palace career. Nowhere near done though, as it's Atal once again who's just starring in this match. It's a beautiful ball to Zaha who just beats that offside line. He runs into the box, passes it to Naya Kirby, and it's 3-0 to Crystal Palace. We're still not done. It's Zaha once again who actually came off the bench. I might want to state that. Anyways, he's still on the ball. He's just trying to get past his defender. It doesn't work out, so he brings it to Nia Kirby. Kirby then decides, oh, let's bring it to Inyaki Williams, who's just going to put it in the back of the net. It's as simple as that. 4-0 victory. West Ham, more like Roast Ham. Manchester United. Eight minutes into the match, a chance for Manchester United. It's Lingard to Mason Greenwood. Greenwood then decides to bring it to Escalante, who finds near post the back of the net. And we're 1-0 down against Manchester United. Immediately after, though, a chance here for Crystal Palace. It's Brahim. He gets past Luke Shaw. And then he finds Orsolini running towards the box. He's into the edge of the box, passing it to Williams. It's saved by Henderson, but then Dembele just curls it right past him. And it's a one-all equalizer already just like that. 30 minutes played, it's Tomas Partey on the ball, he passes it back to Ricardo Rinaldi, who's actually kind of stealing Milivojevic's job by the way. Anyways, it's back to Rinaldi, to Orsolini, Orsolini lays it off for Inyaki Williams, and Williams once again scoring in another match. It's, it's old news. And then right before the end of the half, the onslaught of attacks against Manchester United continued. It's Orsolini, he sees the run by, well, Inyaki Williams once again, Inyaki decides to backtrack a little bit, take the shot, and it's right past Anderson, and it's 3-1. What an incredible turnaround. Still not done though, it's Tomas Partey to Inyaki Williams. He sees Orsolini this time, and the Orsolini and Yaki Williams link is as strong as ever. 4-1, just like that. Still not done with Manchester United. We had some business, and that business, well, was to completely humiliate them at Selhurst. It's a beautiful ball from Ayu, and now Usman with the half volley into the back of the net, off the post and in. Beautiful. Mwah. Everton. Three minutes into the match, Zaha enters the box and gets... We're gonna call that a foul because that's what the ref said in this game for some reason. And Usman Dembele to take the penalty and he buries it into the back of the net. It's a brilliant penalty and it's 1-0 to Crystal Palace just like that. Not even 20 minutes have passed and Palace once again on the attack. It's Orsolini. He's trying to scout someone out. He sees the running Usman Dembele and he's gonna find Usman with a brilliant ball and Usman's just gonna leave it for Inyaki Williams and once again Inyaki is scoring in another match. And with the match level, thanks to us choking against Everton of all teams, it's David Boateng. He sees the free run by Ricardo Orsolini, and with that strong left foot into the top left corner, it's 3-2, and we reclaim our glorious lead. I almost forgot to record, so one goal is actually missing from this Burnley match. But, don't worry. You didn't miss them all. 30 minutes played, it's Usman Dembele running down this wing, owning this wing like he's some kind of landlord. He decides to pass it to Tomas Partey, and Partey, off his first dribble, puts it in the back of the net. It's 2-0 to Crystal Palace, just like that. And it's still the first half, by the way. It's Nia Kirby this time. Kirby with a brilliant through ball to Inyaki. Inyaki fools his defender, and he's just gonna put it in the back of the net. I believe that's four matches Inyaki has scored in. 
consecutively. Almost 40 minutes played now, it's Nia Kirby once again, he leaves it for Inyaki Williams, Williams decides to be unselfish this time, leaves it for Nia Kirby, and Kirby puts in the back of the net. 4-0. Into the second half, finally we go, it's Inyaki Williams, a nice little lob to Brahim, and Brahim has some room to cross, he decides to cut inside though, pass it to Rinaldi who's outside the box, who takes it first time, and dear god! We have ourselves an absolute prospect, let me tell ya. Now 80 minutes played, it's Ricardo Rinaldi once again, he passes it to Tomas Parti. Parti sees the run by Orsolini, and Orsolini is gonna slip it right past Nick Pope to make it 6-0 to Crystal Palace. You just love to see it, don't ya? And with the match against Burnley done and over with, we're into mid-season. So currently we are first with a two-point lead against Liverpool, then Chelsea, then Spurs, then Arsenal. I'm not gonna tell you the pattern, but you're gonna notice a pattern here. Anyways, West Ham. 61 minutes played, it was kind of a struggle for us to find the back of the nets, and for some reason I don't know why we do this at home, but we just do. We just destroy teams away, but we just can't really seem to find a goal um, at home. But nonetheless, it's 1-0 to Crystal Palace thanks to Orsolini once again. Now this highlight, my friends, I'm not really sure how exactly I'm supposed to explain this to you, so, you know, I'm just gonna ramble on until it actually scores. 2-0. And just to put the dagger in this one, even though there's already really a dagger in this one, it's Vinagre running down on the wing, he enters the box, there's really no one to pass to, so he takes it himself, and successfully scores. Both of our fullbacks have managed to score in one episode. Are you, um, are you seeing the pattern yet? <clears throat> Anyways, it's Zaha on the ball. It's the 80th minute, by the way. We have struggled to find the back of the net against Leicester once again. But it's Orsolini. He runs past his defender, leaves it for Inyaki Williams, and Williams puts it in the back of the nets. It's an 82nd minute match winner against Leicester City. And thank God, because I hate playing at King Power Stadium, as you can tell. Southampton. Five minutes played, it's Rinaldi. He passes it to... Ricardo Orsolini, and Orsolini, with the little chef aspect of his game, brings it to Inyaki Williams, and Inyaki's gonna score, there's, there's without a doubt. 35 minutes played, it's an attack for Southampton here, it's El Yunusi receiving it from Kuchayev, El Yunusi nowhere to go, so he passes it back to Kuchayev with a ton of room, he splits between two of our defenders, and finds the back of the net. Awful defending, and it's 1-0. 52 minutes played, a chance for Crystal Palace off the corner, but it's punched out by the keeper, it falls to Ricardo Orsolini, to Ricardo Rinaldi now, and he takes the shot, it's safe, but then the rebound is put in by Anyaki Williams. And we win 2-0 thanks to a bit of luck. Watford. 35 minutes played, it's Tomas Parti to Luka Milivojevic who passes it to Orsolini, and Orsolini with the beautiful footwork to get past his defender and put it into the back of the net. Scenes of what he did against Watford in the past, I mean this man destroys Watford on a daily basis if he could. 70 minutes played, a chance for Watford off a really really accurate long ball to Ismailius Har who crosses it in for Kina, and he scores. Then 85 minutes played, still Palace trying to find that last gasp winner. It's Dembele who takes the shot, but he's fouled by a Watford defender. The amount of penalties I'm getting as recent is more than the amount of VAR calls Man United have in favor for them. You can't even fight me on this, United fans. Nonetheless, 86 minutes played, Dembele to bury it, of course he will. Top right corner, that is a very nice penalty. And once again, another 2-1 win at home. January flashed by in a matter of milliseconds, it seemed like. So, table review. We are still in first place, we now actually have a 5-point gap between us in second and third place, because they're tied on points, Liverpool and Chelsea. Then there's Spurs with 53 points, and Manchester City, who have been kind of underperforming, in 5th. Manchester United. Again. 4 minutes into this match, it's Milivojevic to Inyaki Williams, back to Milivojevic. Milivojevic trying to scout a run, and it's Orsolini making that run, and he puts it in the back of the net. 1-0 to Crystal Palace at Old Trafford. We have outscored Manchester United in the last 2 matches so far, 6-1. to 20 minutes played, it's Fred on the ball, he passes it to Olario, who then crosses it in for Thorgan Hazard. And Thorgan Hazard makes it 1-all. So now that count is 6-2. to two. 44 minutes played now, it's Williams leading this attack to Milivojevic, through ball 2 and Yaki Williams, and once again, Milivojevic finding 2 assists. The battle between him and Rinaldi so far is quite interesting. Alright, I think it's time to see who we face in the round of 16. Bayern? B Bayern? 
Bayern? Bayern? <laughs>